WTDG Toledo, Bridges, with your host, Donnie Miller, connecting our community with information about issues and opportunities. Good Sunday morning and welcome to Bridges. I'm really happy to have you here with us today. We got lots of great information from our city council representatives last week. This is part two of that conversation. We had so much to talk about, we had to do it again. I'm going to introduce you to these great guys who agreed to come back um, and talk with us today. You all know Tom Winooski. He's a Republican on city council. George Sorrento, we all know, Republican as well. And um, this independent guy down at the end of the table who says he's always been an independent, Mike Collins. Welcome, you guys. Good Welcome back. back. Good Welcome morning. Back. Really glad to have you. You know, what, there's lots to talk about again today, including the information that came out on Friday um, that put Toledo at the bottom of the list of uh, cities uh, in Ohio for economic development. I don't know if any of you have had a chance to see that. So I'd like to talk about that today and what that really means, but I want us to talk a little bit more about the water issue that we talked about last week. I got lots of calls about that. People really concerned that, you know, their rates were going up. Where are they going to get uh, this money in households that aren't seeing any increase in income most often, and they're not really sure why this hasn't been taken care of before. That was one of the questions I got. Thanks for sending that in. I asked for questions from, from viewers last week. Responses to that? Quite frankly, prior administrations, particularly in the 90s, did not address that issue. They didn't want to address the issue. They were told by the Department of Public Utilities leadership that rate increases were warranted, that the aging water plant built in 1941 needed a lot of work. And had they uh, implemented very, very minute increases in the early 90s, we wouldn't be in this mess. And now we're, we're in this mess going forward. Yes, yeah, we're it, in crisis mode. We are in crisis. And what does that mean, somebody, Michael? What does that mean? Well, it, frankly, we are under the uh, controls at, at this moment in time of the Ohio EPA. And what they would like to see done, and I don't see how any way, shape, or form it can be done, is they would like to see us build a brand new facility out at the Collins uh, Park complex and at the same time continue our investments in terms of the mechanical and, and the capital cost to bring the current facility into play and I don't know how in the world that could possibly be done. Uh, it's estimated by DPU, Department of Public Utilities, that the project's going to take anywhere between four to six years mm. and very honestly we, as we addressed last week, we came very, very close to losing our complete supply of water uh, as a result of a pump breaking down. And it's, as Councilman Serrano said, it's, I mean, to lament over how we got here isn't going to fix the problem. The analogy that I used at Council last, last well, two weeks ago actually, I said this is like a discussion uh, about a house. The roof is dysfunctional, the roof will not protect the house and all of a sudden we have a storm center coming through with a 100% chance of rain. Are we going to call the interior decorator and ask whether floral wallpaper works in the living room or not? Of course not. And that's where we're at today. We've got, we have got a huge, huge problem to attack. And the issue that I have is those, that are, those people who are living at the minimum wage, basically, uh, in terms of the federal standards, how do we deal with that particular part of the population? Right. Any thoughts? Any thoughts about that at all? I mean, that's a tough one, and that's really where most of the angst is coming from. You know, we, it reminds me of when we were transferring over to privatization on the refuse collection. There was an additional fee that was on the water bill, and those monthly fees do add up for residents. There's no question and about seniors, that. And seniors, absolutely. Seniors and, and, and low-income folks, yeah. yeah. I just, I really, truly believe I put on my last newsletter a survey to see what would residents be willing to pay additional monthly. What I would hope the administration will do is come with a... a stepped plan. We hope to tackle this in the next year, but that there's a long-range plan for handling yeah, this. Yeah, sort of easing. That's yeah. right. So maybe we can just bite off a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. We've already increased some water rates um, a couple of years back, but as, as Councilman Collins pointed out, 
this has to be addressed. We can no longer kick the can so down the road. So people need to understand that there is going to be an increase, yes. George. There's, there's absolutely going to be an increase. No way around it. That is correct. No way around it. Any idea when that will kick in? Any thoughts? Well, there's a rate review that's conducted by the Public Utilities Department, and my understanding of Tuesday of this week is they've pretty well wrapped it up and they're going to present it to council for recommendations. And of course then there'll be dialogue and we will have input in it because the administration can't unilaterally act. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have to take all of these issues into consideration. It'll strictly be water. It won't have anything to do with, with sewers, storm or sanitaries. This will strictly be the one side of the three sides of the building, the, mm -hmm. the water side. Mm -hmm. There are you, two things that are coming up. I'm sorry. Go no, yeah, please, go ahead. Only in, in, there are still two components that are out there, and by that I mean we were looking for a, um, there's a performance audit. We put together a performance audit review committee to look at what's happening at DPU. Uh, we were initially, we went, I say we council, was initially going to pursue possibly a, an affordability study of what mm -hmm. residents, Thankfully, the uh, administration said they're going to put some numbers together and look at that. I'm, I'm not one for spending a lot of money on studies. This is a priority. If you have a limited amount of funds at your household, we understand that. But you have to now value those funds and say it is important to have fresh, clean drinking water when I twist a knob. And I think we have to have some kind of rate increase to get this done. To get that done. Mm -hmm. But I think the audit will be good on mm -hmm. the performance audit, will be good for the entire city. And it lets the public know we're not just throwing money out the window. Sure. George, were you and the that? performance audit is important. I've talked to several times with the state auditor's office past uh, 10 days, and uh, we will have an audit. Uh, it's just a matter of deciding who's going to conduct it. The good news is the auditor of state's office can do it and has done that in the past in other mm -hmm. cities like Cincinnati. Sure. And secondly, we will have public hearings on any proposed rate increases. I think all of us are committed to that. Yeah, and that, I'm so glad you said that because I was just going to ask you all if you are available for people to talk to you about this. Absolutely. These, these decisions can't be made in a vacuum. I mean, there has to be first an explanation as to where we're at and why we need this because it's, it's no longer, an, it's, a, it's, it's an absolute. We have to do this. We have no choices. Mm -hmm. and, right. and, 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 the, and, and we can't get too confused here in terms of the performance audit. That deals with structure and policy. Mm -hmm. And where we're in trouble is in mechanical and capital, meaning the equipment and the building. And, the building, sure. and there's no performance audit that's going to tell us anything we don't know about that stuff. Right. We're in bad so, well, shape. This, this will keep this will keep <coughs> us in shape, and I, I, I want to move on to some other things. But but this um, increase is this is all we should expect. We shouldn't necessarily expect it to go up over the years. We would probably we don't know. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah, and we're not we, sure yet. I mean, all right, just they're going to come in with a, a right. proposal, and we're going to look at every side and, of it. Okay, and and the other, I want to take this moment too to mention something. Um, uh, Councilman Collins that you mentioned earlier, people should know that these decisions are not solely in your hands. Um, so those folks that have elected you to office need to understand that it's not up to you to say yes this will happen solely and it's not solely up to you to say no this won't happen. No absolutely, the, in the structure of government we're the legislative branch, we're not the administrative branch. We cannot dictate policy actually under our charter. Uh, we can't tell the chief of police how many people he will have and where they will be placed. We can't tell the chief of fire or anybody else for that matter. We can't give them direction. The only thing we can do is legislate laws and deal with the finances of the city of Toledo. So it's, it's not, we're not, while we have to be part of the solution, the solution is not our responsibility solely. Yeah, well you know what, that's a great segue into another question that, that I received. Um, in this past week, and, and that was the, the question as to whether there are too many of you to, to do this work. Should there be fewer city council people, given the limits of, of your authority in the process, does it take all of you to influence that process? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a veteran uh, almost 12 years now on city council. My term ends uh, December 31. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that we really have a good balance on council. We have six district members and six at-large members. And I think each district and each at-large person has a different perspective and we deal with different issues. But it's very important to represent the citizenry. And the fact of the matter is in Cleveland they have 19 councilmen. 
uh, in Cincinnati, they have nine uh, council members. Akron has, I believe, nine also. So we're populations we're, are a tad different well, between here and Cleveland. Well, sure, sure. But, but we tried the. You know, it reminds me of 2008. Um, Councilwoman Webb and I pushed the nine is fine, trying to I reduce the I remember that very well. You were here <coughs> yeah. talking about that, and we yeah. got our knuckles wrapped on that. Uh, the mm -hmm. electorate didn't want it, and um, you know, so we listened to what they say. And, and Cincinnati is a city manager form of government, right? With their not strong mayor. Mm -hmm. But so yeah, I, I th I'm with George in the sense that I think we do get along pretty well, and we the district. That's why you know, what I proposed, you know, was we would still maintain that district representation, but we would do some things with the at large. But I, you know, I'm, I don't think we're anywhere near reducing the size of council anymore. I, not for some time. I think we had vetted that through the public. They didn't want it. Didn't want it. Didn't yeah, want it. I remember. Yeah. I remember. I, but, but having some distance from that, how do you feel about that now? You were pretty. You were pretty adamant at that time about nine being an adequate yeah. number. Well, and you know, we're doing, uh, there's a committee looking at the, the salary review committee for council and the mayor now, and they are asking, would this be a full-time job? What are your thoughts about this and this? I personally still think we could do nine. I wish we could get more aides in the office or some kind of, we got one aide to every three council members. So there's some internal working that if I were the CEO of that area, I would, I would alter some things. But uh, as it stands now, it, it, I don't see us reducing it from the 12 we have. Okay. Yeah. All right. But but not because you all get along, but because you think that it's necessary to have 12 to get this work done. Sometimes Collins? it creates a problem because on a split issue, and we have had those mm -hmm. uh, on that even number. That's right. We yeah. we it's at that point in time damage. shift the the responsibilities of a legislative branch of government over to the administration, mm -hmm. and we've had that occasionally uh, occur, and I think that's. Frankly, I don't. I disagree with that. I think that the council should be able to manage and uh, maintain their own independence and make their own decisions. And, and and that's one of the drawbacks when having an even number. Yeah. I found it interesting, though, in the sense that when that nine is fine in, in the at-large election that year, that Councilman Ludeman was. So this would have been four years ago. The top three were, were um, um, McNamara, you, mm -hmm. and Ludeman. So. If it had gone that route, we would have parsed out some of the Democrats. We would have had two Republicans representing those other three at large. And mm -hmm. again, when you look at the dynamics of the party balance, I think that would have been a little more equitable. Equitable than, than mm -hmm. what we've got right now. Right. Hold that thought, though. We have to go away for just a moment. We will be right back. Mm -hmm.